Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous couple of videos, we learned about merges and how to resolve merge conflicts. Today, we're finally going to talk about merges and also touch upon cherry picking. And in the upcoming videos, we're going to start rewriting history like a boss. Let's get right to it. <music> Alright, now what is a rebase? A rebase is a mechanism to change the base of your branch, to change its location, so to say. It's the point where you branched off. Now, even though this definition is technically correct, it is not particularly useful. So let's try something else. A rebase is a Swiss army knife for history rewrites. And every time you hear the phrase history rewrite, you should immediately remember that history rewrites are potentially very dangerous. It's a very simple algorithm. You push, your colleague pulls, you rewrite, you force another push, your colleague pulls, your colleague cries, you buy him or her a cup of coffee, then he or she uses a hard reset to your rewrite and your friends again. However, in practice, this happens very rarely. Sorry for the free coffee lovers. All right, now, even though a rebase is a Swiss army knife for history rewrites, most of the time you use it only in two scenarios. Scenario number one, you want to make the commit graph look clean and clean means sequential. You want to make it look like as if all the developers waited for each other to finish before they started to work on their thing. Of course, in reality, everybody worked in parallel. After all, this is one of the major goals to allow the developers to work without stepping on each other's feet. I would like to note that this is not just some esoteric choice. A clean sequential commit history is actually practical. It is not an uncommon task to want to find a particular commit in the commit history, which is much easier to do in a clean sequential commit graph. Now, the second scenario is very different from the first one and in this one you desire to make the commits on your topic branch readable and by that I don't only mean the commit messages I mean the actual commits themselves for instance I usually treat my topic branches like piles of garbage I commit all the time like there is no tomorrow however right before I create a PR and sometimes even after I create a PR I rebase to make everything look like I did everything step by step this rebase is called an interactive rebase, a topic for the upcoming videos. Both scenarios allow you to keep your topic branch up to date with some main branch. You rebase all the time and therefore you make it look like as if you started today and not a couple of weeks ago. I know it sounds like magic, but it's actually very straightforward. Let's start with the scenario one. And for this, we need to understand what a sequential commit graph looks like. Now, in theory, it could look like a straight line, but since there is this convention to always create merge commits every time a topic branch is merged into main, it will look, well, slightly different from a straight line. I already have a repo prepared for you. In fact, multiple repos. In the first one, we're gonna have two developers who worked on their two separate topics and each of them created two commits. And it's gonna look like as if they waited for each other to start. So I created this directory called the rebase playground and inside of it, we're gonna have eight different examples. They're pretty much all the same examples. They're just like in slightly different states. So we're gonna go into the first one like this and I'm going to do glog A so that you can see that it looks like as if two developers waited for each other, right? So first this one started, created a topic branch, created two commits and then merged them into main. Then the second developer started, created two commits and then merged it into main. It looks very understandable and clean, right? Unfortunately, in practice, most Git repositories are not that clean because of hot fixes and other accidents like that, but they do look very similar. By the way, notice how every time a feature was merged in, it created a new version of the software. This is not that typical in practice. In practice, you might have another branch somewhere in between the main and your topic branches. Usually this branch is going to be called develop, devil, dev, or something similar, maybe even integration. By the way, there are many Git workflows out there and some of them include many long-lived branches, but at least having one extra branch between main and your topic branches is the most common scenario. A rule of thumb is as features get more stable, the closer they get to main. Never forget that main is just a name. Some teams choose to rename it or even create dedicated branches and call them production or something. I have an example for you. And by the way, in ZSH, you actually don't need to type in CD. So I'm going to go up and then down into it too. Okay. So if I do this, then notice that the way uh, Git displays this graph is not ideal. And this is simply a limitation of um, the graph drawing implementation. If we actually run it through a TIG, right? Uh, it's going to look like this. 
right? So it's going to look like um, somebody started on, you know, on the initial commit, created a couple of topics, and then it was merged into another branch called develop. And then somebody started on develop, created two commits, merged it into develop again, and only then it was merged into main, and only then it became uh, version one. Let me actually go down like this so that you see that these are two branches, main and develop. They're both long-lived branches, uh, whereas topic two and topic one, these pointers were deleted. I also want to take the time to introduce an extension to you in Visual Studio Code. As a reminder, there are millions of uh, Git integration tools out there. Uh, this particular one is called Git Graph. And I already have it installed, I just need to install it in WSL because I'm running the whole th thing through WSL. So once it's installed, you're going to have this button over here, Git Graph, and you can click on it. We can close this and you're going to see a, uh, a graph which pretty much looks like what I just described, right? So the initial branch and the develop branch, they both started over here. There were two commits merged into develop, two more commits merged into develop, and then the whole thing merged into main. But again, in practice, this is not how the whole thing happened. It, the history was just rewritten. You can also click around over here and actually, you know, see the actual changes uh, and stuff. It's 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 a really, really cool tool. I'm going to keep showing you uh, more and more tools as we move along with this playlist. Uh, let me close it for now. Now, let me scroll up a little bit. Notice that whatever convention your team is using, it will involve one or some other way to include the name of the branch in the actual commit messages because the pointers to the branches are going to be deleted at some point. This is also why it is very common to include the ticket numbers in the, in the branch names and therefore then in the commit messages. Okay, so that uh, later you can still see that you know these things they happen somewhere else and they were related to some ticket let me actually go down again and switch back to one so that i can show you the graph with the p flag which will show you the patches right so i basically created only one file and then i changed this file a couple of times this is how i prepared this repository so i started with just one line in there which was which was same content then i changed it to first change and i changed it to second change then i changed it to third change and then i changed it to fourth change and that's all Okay, so all of the uh, upcoming uh, repositories that we're going to see there, they're, they're all created based on this. All right, so behind the door number three, we're going to go back in time and see how this repository actually looked like when it was written because there's no way in hell that these two developers waited for each other. In fact, even though it's visible that both of them, they started on the initial commit over here and over here, I actually want to demonstrate this to you a little bit more. Now, um, I'm going to do this over here and I'm going to, what is this rendering thingy? Let me do this like that. Okay, so over here, I'm going to go in there again, and I'm going to go into Dev Rebase Playground 3. Okay, so I wrote a teeny tiny uh, script, and I used a tool called iNotify Tools. So you can install it by doing sudo apt, um, sudo apt install, like the sudo apt install, uh, half and y iNotify Tools. And this tool uh, helps you to uh, watch a directory for changes, and then you can run some commands. So uh, I did a thing called... Um, where did I put it? I put it into user local bin and I called it uh, glog A, right? But with a W for watch, okay? So it's a tiny script that basically says, while true, I'm gonna uh, go and call iNotify wait uh, quietly. I'm gonna uh, look recursively for um, changes in, the, in this directory. And then every time it detects a change, it's gonna clear the screen and it's gonna run this command to display exactly this log, okay? So I'm just going to run it. In this directory so it's going to look like this okay and now every time i change something over here it's simply going to redraw the graph for us okay so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to um uh, i want to sort of go, go back before i basically want to remove this merge okay so the first thing that i need to make sure is that i don't lose track of of this commit so i'm going to assign a name to it by just assigning a branch to it and i believe that this is the first time that we're doing this actually we're going to say git branch topic one right so this used to be topic one and we're going to say that uh we're not going to create this pointer right here we're going to create it at 75 f b and I'm not sure if I showed you before that you can actually press tab. Okay, so as soon as I click over here, there will be a branch that will uh, appear over there. This is exactly what we did. This is exactly why I created this uh, this thingy so that I can just keep typing and everything is going to be uh, displayed on the right. Okay, so uh, let's go uh, switch to the main branch. And as a reminder, we have this alias GRHH, which is git reset hard. So we're going to say git reset hard, and we're going to go to 301C, which is the initial commit, like this. So as you can see, this is exactly how it looked like before uh, before topic two was merged, right? So topic two, uh, I'm sorry, before topic one was merged, right? This is the one that, that, that was merged, right? So topic one was merged in before, and that's why the commit graph looks like 
what it looks like okay now uh, I've shown you reset in the in the previous couple of videos but I actually haven't told you you know the whole story there's actually a thing like every time you reset uh, Git actually remembers where you came from so if we do uh, ref parse I'm gonna ask it to display or the original hat right before we did the reset uh, if you scroll up over here you're gonna see that this is e 6 ae which is the one that used to be at the top over here okay so now we can actually simply go and say erhh or a tap like this and we're back to exactly how the graph used to look like let me actually reduce the font a little bit so that it so that it fits into one line also I'm not sure if I showed you this alias but there is this alias called GBDA for git branch uh, delete all merge okay so this is a very complicated alias but essentially it figures out that uh, you know it, it looks at branches like main development develop devil and dev this is these are the ones that I mentioned and it basically uh, you know checks whether the branch was already merged in or not and if it and if it was then it simply deletes it okay so it's gonna figure out that topic one is already merged into main and therefore it's gonna find it and delete it it's gonna find topic two but it's gonna see that it's not merged yet and then it's gonna leave it alone okay so we're just gonna do GBDA and it's gone okay and now let's also switch back to topic two Okay, so this is how it was before we started doing this weird reset. Cool, so this is where we are and we're gonna put ourselves into the shoes of Dev2. We're working on topic two. And if we were to merge it into main, uh, we might, you know, run into some conflicts. It's not gonna be a clean merge because the, you know, our main used to look very different when we started. Now, you never want to merge something like this straight into main because usually things that go into main, they should be, you know, tested, reviewed by somebody, uh, you know they should be like ready to go to production or at least to be staged on some server so at least at the very least what you should do is you should merge in reverse you should merge the main into your topic to branch right and make sure that all of the conflicts are resolved all of the tests are passing you create your pr the whole nine yards but if you do that then the commit graph is not going to look sequential and clean in fact i'm going to show you this uh, a bit later and by the way if you do this through a github right if you ignore my advice and you go to github you create a pr for topic two and you click on merge into main it's going to notice like if there are conflicts and if there are conflicts it will actually run through that thing that i just explained it will actually first merge main into your branch and only then you're going to say okay now merge my pr and then it's going to merge the topic two into main i'm actually going to demonstrate this by the end of the video and so so essentially what we need to do is pray pray to God that we can sort of like go back in time or sort of go forwards in time and uh, pretend as if we were starting today right we would like to start over here this would be awesome if we could start over here and then do our change and then do our and, do, and then do this change and this is exactly what the rebase is going to do for us it's going to take these two commits and pretend as if their base was not here but it was over there let me already show you two aliases we're not gonna run them so you run git rebase or there is also git rebase main uh, i'm just showing them to you to uh to point out that a rebase sort of works in reverse remember when you were saying um i don't know let's say you were on the main branch and you would say uh, you know git merge uh, some topic right then you would take the topic branch and you would merge the changes into your main branch uh, the rebase works the other way around we are already on we are on topic two right and we're saying rebase topic two usually on top of main or on top of some other long-lived branch this is what you usually would want so it's sort of like the command is sort of in reverse so in just a second we're going to run this command git rebase main and what it will do is it will go backwards from here right because we are on topic two so it will go backwards and while it walks it will compute the deltas between these commits and it will store these deltas into special files and then once it's going to reach the uh, base right because it knows that we're merging into we're, we're rebasing on top of main it understands the same as during the merge it understands like where you branched off it will stop after this it takes the topic to pointer and does a hard reset onto main okay and at this point these two commits they become unreachable right because there's no point or point pointing to them right you know there's always a raft log but you know it's, it's gone okay and then the magic starts it looks into these files where the deltas are stored and it starts to reapply them one by one on top of main and so it creates two new commits with essentially the same changes unless there are conflicts and then you resolve them exactly the same way as you would resolve merge conflicts so let's finally run it and we're going to see that we actually have let me do this that we actually have uh, conflicts right the same as with a merge um, no worries you can always you know you can abort it the same as you can abort a merge as you can see there is a git rebase abort you know the same as you would do you know git merge abort in fact there are aliases for that as a reminder there is gma for git merge abort and there is also git rebase abort like this 
right? Exactly the same thing. Now, um, you can also run uh, skip. This is a weird one. The things that you need to understand about rebases is that they're very, very powerful and they can rerun, re rewrite history in such a way that they, you know, they change the order of commits, they squash the commits, they uh, split the commits and so on. And what might happen is that, uh, you know, one commits deletes, deletes a file and then the other one uh, changes this file, right? And so if you change their order, then you might run into issues where, uh, you know, where things don't work or also you might run into issues where, uh, you know, if you rebase multiple times, then some of the commits they were already applied and therefore it, it's gonna tell you hey there's nothing to do and then you can say skip in practice I've I've almost never had to to skip I believe I had to do it only once so I'm gonna shut up and not talk about it now it's a conflict because over here we change content to second change right and uh, these guys they change content to third change okay and so uh, we're running into a merge conflict Okay, in fact, uh, we can run a GST and what we're going to see over here is uh, a little bit of an um, implementation detail leaking and it says that it's actually an interactive rebase in progress, whereas we're actually not really interacting with our rebase, but we're going to talk more about this in the upcoming videos. Okay, so um, we're going to skip this for now, but basically it says, hey, both of them, they modified the file. So same as before, we're going to run GMT for our merge tool, which is VS Code. It's going to open it. It's going to look pretty much the same as a regular merge, right? It's going to say that our current change is the second change, okay? The base was content, and it's going to say that the incoming change is actually the uh, this one that changes the file for the third time. Now, in practice, uh, it is actually very, very clear what to choose over here because in practice, you know, you know, you know the tool, you understand the changes. Over here, we can pick pretty much whatever we want. So I'm gonna keep the uh, incoming change, okay? Save the file, close VS Code, same deal as always. Okay, let's do GST, it's gonna look like this. Okay, and so during a merge, we would create a merge commit now, right? But over here, we're not finished rebasing, you know? There might be, you know, 300 more commits that still need to be reapplied and so all we need to do is we need to tell git to continue the rebase in fact there is an alias grbc git rebase continue so this is what we're going to do git rebase continue now before i run it i should point out that a rebase is a very very fast operation unless you have conflicts right because then you have uh, to manually intervene intervene but usually don't be afraid of rebases like if there are no conflicts it's gonna it's gonna be reapplied like in a, in a second Okay, so let's gonna continue, and I believe it's going to open our editor to uh, to confirm the um, the commit message. Okay, it's gonna be topic two changes file for the third time, like this. Okay, let's actually create a little bit, a little bit less space. Okay, and so as I just explained, this is exactly what it did, right? So it removed these two commits, reapplied them over here. They're completely new commits, right? Which is why they have completely different shots. Okay, but the changes are exactly the same. In fact, let's actually do uh, not over there. Let's actually go over here. And let's do log a hyphen p so that we can see okay so was a content there was a first change second change third change fourth change as if these two developers waited for each other now as a warning we might have pushed our branch before and therefore uh, git is not going to allow us to push again now in this particular scenario i don't have a remote repository setup because i was too lazy and we're going to do this in the upcoming videos anyway but uh, in practice uh, it will uh, forbid you to do a push right and therefore you're going to need a to do a force push and it's going to look like this and most of these um, relatively like, dangerous commands the aliases for them are going to contain an exclamation mark we're going to um, we're going to actually see a couple more of them in the upcoming videos also in practice this is never a real issue because usually you're working on your topic branch alone it's very lonely i know and then you can do pretty much whatever you want with it and if one of your colleagues pulls it down for some reason then um, I'm sorry to say this, but it's sort of like his fault, okay? And also in the upcoming videos, I'm gonna show you how to resolve this issue. Uh, you know, like most uh, tutorials about Git, when they talk about rebases and rewriting history, they say, you know, it's very dangerous, very dangerous, but you know, once you actually see how easy it is to resolve, it's actually not such a big deal. Essentially, the person in trouble is gonna either do a hard reset to your changes, or they're gonna merge it with your changes, or they're gonna rebase it with your changes, and that's it, problem solved. All right, let me create more space on the right, okay? And then we can finally, because I wanna bring it to the same state as the other repository, okay? So we're gonna go back to master, and we're going to merge in the topic two, and we're gonna say that we don't want the fast forward. Remember, it's a convention to, to do it like this. Okay, and we're gonna call it, uh, so over here we called it uh, V1, so over here I'm gonna call it V2, okay? Like this, 
okay and there we go it looks exactly like it did before and we can also remove the branch you know the topic to branch uh, we don't need right so just GBA, GBDA it's gonna find it that it's already merged and that's it okay and we can also look into the file and it's gonna contain our uh, force change all right now let's also go through the alternative sequencing right because you know if they went to uh, you know into parallel ways there there is a way that you know one finished first and you know there is a way that the other finished first okay so I already have it prepared over here and we're gonna do the same thing Log a w we're gonna go over here I'm gonna go in there okay there we go this is how it looks like basically they they're switched you know the topic two was merged first uh you know before the topic one but as you can imagine it looks pretty much exactly the same okay so we're gonna do e rebase master and then we're gonna run our tool we're going to pick some change uh, we're gonna pick uh, it, it really doesn't matter which one we're gonna which one we're gonna pick first or fourth uh, Again like in a real project. It's it's much easier to make this choice over here. I can do pretty much what I want Let's switch to main. Let's merge topic one without the fast-forward. Okay. Oh, I actually forgot to continue the merge uh, Let's actually switch to topic one and um, Can I switch branch while rebasing? All right, so it gives me an opportunity to do git re rebase uh, quit or maybe even abort. Can we do abort? Abort. There we go. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So let's do this thing again. So we're going to do uh, grbm and gmt. And I'm going to say that we're going to pick the incoming change, uh, which is over here. This one close. I forgot to continue, right? So grbc. There we go like this now we can uh, go back to master and now we can merge it in without fast forward we got to mention topic one like this i'm going to call it version two like that okay so gbda and there we go it looks exactly like it was supposed to look like okay so you have like this parallel thing and you can bring it in like this or like that let's also look into the file real quick okay so now it contains the second change which means uh we went from content to third change then to fourth change and then to first change and then to second change all right whatever all right now all of my previous videos turned out to be long so i really hope that this one is going to fit into half an hour but i really want to show you something else i want to show you what would have happened if the rebase feature didn't exist so we're going to switch into five five so let's do this and then also do that okay so it's pretty much exactly the same uh, as, it, as it looked before okay so uh, we're gonna go over here into five we're going to merge main into topic two right so basically to to update it okay so same conflict so we're gonna do GMT all right so we have the force change force change seems to be uh, more important okay like this and let's close it okay so now we need to finish the merge so we need to uh get commit message like this was actually where is my symbol with the changes i'll go fix you're still merging okay but shouldn't it show me the thing it's so weird that it doesn't even show it to me all right so um this merges master into topic two oh it's pro oh it doesn't show anything because we we um because we picked the force change so nothing nothing actually changed over here okay but we need to do this okay so now it looks and now it looks weird like this so if we run it through tig then we're going to see that it actually looks like this right so we were on on topic two and we updated it with whatever was on main well, let's actually exit and do uh do that even though it looks weird um so we're going to do this and we're going to switch back to master and we're going to go to uh topic two no fast forward right so now we're we're, we're ready to merge it into into main so we're going to do this and we're going to call it v2 okay like this and then we're going to do gbda and this is how it looks like very very ugly even uh even in tig it still looks very very ugly and uh not really not really understandable now what i also want to show you is that if you don't do it like i just did it and if you just go and just like uh, on on github you straight you know go for a merge github will actually do this for you as i explained before okay so let me actually go to uh to six okay and do that okay so that's exactly how uh how it was before let's do like this okay so let me actually gonna go uh let me actually go to github.com uh slash get from zero to hero we're going to create another another um repo and we're going to call it uh weird merge and it's going to be private without any files we're going to create it so we're going to make sure that we are on ssh okay so i'm going to clone this one 
uh, I meant copy. Okay, so we're gonna go over here and notice that we're on the topic two branch and usually the main branch is the one that is uh, pushed first. And remember how I said that Git doesn't have a concept of default branches, but GitHub does. And essentially the first branch that you push is gonna be the, the main branch. So this is going to show me the, so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do re in reverse. We're gonna push the topic two branch first and then we're gonna uh, push the main branch first so that I can show you GitHub's feature to, uh, to change the default branch. So first let me show you an alias called a GRA, which is Git Remote Add. So we can do GRA origin and then that thing that we copied from github like this okay and now i can do grv right so alias grv like this and we can see that everything is set up now okay now uh there is this alias gpsup i'm sure that i showed it to you before it gets set up set up stream okay so we're going to push uh topic two first right like this and we're also going to go back to main and we're going to put uh we're going to push main as well okay gpsup there we go All right, now if you go over here and we're going to reload, okay, now it's gonna see, see it shows last topic too because it th thinks that it's the main branch and it thinks that, you know, we created something on main and says, hey, main has recent pushes, you know, do you wanna, you know, do you wanna create a pull request to the topic too? Uh, but that's not what we want. Uh, so we need to go to branches over here. Um, hmm, settings, hold on, settings. Branches over here probably, right? Branches, come on. There we go. And we have the default branch is considered the base branch in the repository against which all pull requests and code commits are automatically made unless you specify a different branch. Topic two, change. Yes, what is that? Switch to another branch. Rename branch, switch to another branch. That's what we want. Okay, so we want main and we're gonna do update. And I understand. All right, and there we go. So now if we go over here, now it's switched. All right, so let's click on branches and let's click on yours. And now we're gonna see topic two. So we're going to create a new pull request, okay? And now it says, can't automatically merge, right? We're still gonna say, you know, don't worry, you can still create the pull request. So we're gonna create a pull request. All right, okay. So the pull request is now created, uh, but now we cannot merge. And in fact, it says, you know, this branch has conflicts that must be resolved. And it says, either use the command line, basically, you know, it says, you know, pull, you know, you know and, and do this update as, as I, you know, as we just did, or you can use the web editor. And this button also just opens the web editor, okay? So we're gonna click on the web editor. And by the way, before I was, before I started to work on this video, I didn't even know that GitHub has, you know, a, a, a merge tool like this, okay? So it looks very, very similar to uh, VS Code. Okay, so we're gonna pick the uh, force change and in fact something is weird i remember i remember when i was working on it it was actually shown it, it actually had buttons over here like something is weird i'm pretty sure that uh this is some sort of bug huh because it actually had buttons over here uh like like you would have in vs code where I, where i could just say you know accept incoming change or or something else okay well okay i guess in this case we're going to do it manually okay so we're going to do this um uh like like really when i was preparing preparing for the studio there were there were buttons the same as in vs code okay we're going to do mark as resolved uh commit merge there we go okay so uh, now we're gonna merge pull request. Okay, so this was when we merged the main into our topic branch. So now we're gonna go back and you know actually you know merge the whole thing into main. Uh, merge pull request, and we're gonna call it uh, v2 over here. Um, we don't need the description like this. Confirm merge. All right. So we're gonna click manually on delete branch. All right. There we go. Okay, so if we go into uh, code probably, and we're gonna see that there is only one branch now, which is main. Okay, so let's go back to our thingy, and we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you an alias GL. Okay, GL is git pull. Okay, so we're gonna do git pull. All right, there we go, it's a fast forward. So we're gonna do, uh, by the way, we probably should do log a W like this. All right, let me press enter. Okay, there we go, like, like this so that the whole thing the whole thing fits into one line okay so there is an also an alias gfa git fetch all prune and we can ignore job stand okay so gfa so all i want is that it notices that uh you know that these that this origin topic two was already merged in right so it should it should disappear 
right there we go it disappeared okay so now again as a reminder alias gbda is going to remove the branch gbda so this one this one just disappeared and yeah there we go so now if we if i leave the six over here and i'm going to go back to five like this i'm going to clear the screen and i'm going to do this you're going to see that it looks exactly like exactly the same right it should look exactly the same let me make it a bit smaller like this like that uh, clear log a like this uh, like that it should it should look the same does it look the same it does look the same like somehow uh, somehow there's something weird with the fonts uh, but yeah essentially it looks the same oh, okay it's over there uh, like this okay yeah i highly encourage you to rebase instead of merging which also reminds me remember how in the previous video i said that in practice merge conflicts usually never happen but rebase conflicts do and so yeah this this is you know i, I showed it to you today <laughs> also remember when we uh pulled for the first time uh, git encouraged us to choose the default whether we want a merge or a rebase or uh whether we want a fast forward merge and if it fails it's gonna it's gonna fail the whole the whole pool and we chose the uh, rebase git content okay uh, which is uh, where is it over here pool rebase true now technically aborting the fast forward merge when it's not possible is probably the safest option uh, but again in practice this almost never happens and if it does happen then I'm probably just gonna do a rebase anyway so uh, I might as well pick a rebase right away all right let me clear the screen and I'm actually gonna show you cherry picking cherry picking is a small rebase with uh, three main differences number one it's done in reverse right so we're reversing again so it's similar to a merge so whereas you rebase on top of some other branch uh, when you cherry pick you're already on some branch like typically main and then you just literally cherry pick just one command from some other branch right so this, this is the second difference you pick only one commit and not the entire branch and the third difference is that you don't move this commit right because remember during a rebase uh, your, your pointer moves and therefore there's nothing pointing to the old stuff and so it kind of fades away uh, whereas during a cherry pick because you're already on, on main this other pointer doesn't move it stays there okay so you, you get this effect of a change being copied over right and by now I'm sure that you understand that everything is immutable and so only the change is being copied over not the actual commit so your commit is gonna end up having uh, a different shot let me show it to you real quick so we're gonna go to seven uh, and we're gonna have glog a which looks as always so we're gonna do uh, this okay so I'm gonna go over here to seven as well like this okay so uh, notice that uh, we're currently on topic two but we need to be on main right so it happens in reverse so we, we are on main okay and what we do is uh, there's an alias GCP get cherry pick okay so we're gonna do GCP and now we're gonna pick uh, let's say this one for example db8f okay so we're gonna do db8f we can also press tab like this okay so we're gonna do this okay it says again you know there's a conflict whatever whatever uh gsd is going to show you that you know we're cherry picking and you can read this slowly you can yeah you know the, the controls are the same you know you can skip you can abort and all you know the whole nine yards okay so let's do gmt let's go and choose uh choose something um third for example except it can change save close the whole thing now behind the scenes a cherry pick is just a rebase in fact uh, this and many other things like this is going to be the topic for another video and so you need to continue the cherry pick the same as you would uh, the same as you would uh, continue a rebase okay so we're gonna do GC uh, uh, let's actually do GST first okay it looks like this and then we're gonna do GCPC to continue and uh, we're also gonna um, should I rename it I'm not gonna rename it. I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay. So uh, once I finish this, then we're gonna see uh, a, a change with this message, right? That I'm going to leave intact. It's going to appear right on top of main, right? Because we we essentially like, copied over uh, the actual change. Okay. So let's go and do this, and there we go. It appeared right over there. Now we're actually gonna go into eight because I want to show you. Um, uh, basically demonstrate again that uh, it doesn't ma doesn't matter even if you pick the uh, you know the, the head of the you know the branch itself it's still going to cherry pick just this one commit uh, it's not gonna you know you know it's not gonna go down like a like a regular rebase would okay so let's do the same thing uh, over here and we're gonna go over here do eight okay so we're gonna do the same thing right so we're gonna do GCM uh, now we're gonna pick the topic two. okay so we you know remember uh, this is just a ref spec right so I'm, I'm targeting this commit by giving it uh, this uh, reference okay so I'm just gonna do this uh, same thing uh, GMT 
uh, picking the uh, probably the incoming change um, this one okay so we're going to save the file uh, GCPC to continue the rebase and we're gonna do the same way right so now I just copied this one and not this one okay but it's always it's always just one now you might be wondering what is the use case for cherry picking and uh, I can honestly think only of one use case it's where you're being experimental and you're creating a branch like topic 2 uh, just to run an experiment and then the experiment goes bad but but during the experiment you actually did some good things like maybe you refactored something or maybe you added a utility function and so you kind of want to save it okay and so you copy it over and then right afterwards you just go and you merge this branch in fact um, I actually haven't showed it to you right so if we get it if you're gonna try to uh, remove it like this right get branch delete it's gonna say that it's not fully merged okay and you can force it uh, by uh, using a capital D like this okay so now it's gone okay so this is this is the typical um, uh, cherry picking, uh, what is it? Work workflow, I guess. In fact, in practice, cherry picking is uh, very rare, which is fine because we're uh, definitely moving closer and closer to the hero portion. In fact, we are already at the hero portion of the uh, of this playlist. You know, we're rewriting stuff already. Okay, and so it's fine that uh, we're learning about the features that you're not going to use uh, in your day to day. Okay, you know, maybe once a month or so. And so, yeah, let me remind you again: uh, please only rebase your own branches. Uh, you know, don't uh, don't share them with anyone. You know, sharing is not caring in this case. Anyways, I hope that after I edit this puppy it's gonna fit into half an hour and I'm gonna see you in the next one where we're gonna talk about interactive rebases and other history rewriting tools but for now as always it's been Vlad dev inside you.com don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you and if you learned something today consider support me on patreon and thus watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else and most importantly take care